Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I'm going to play with the D-Tron 1071 and that is a digital multimeter, seven and a half digits. Pretty cool. I'm going to put it on the on the calibrator, the Fluke, the 5101B. Um, and that is actually only for four and a half digits, but we can have a pretty cool, uh, good idea if the if the Datron functions as it should. Best way is to heat it up for a few minutes. Well, actually, they say two hours for the for the calibrator, but it is summertime and it is already pretty hot. So I'm gonna heat it up just for 30 minutes, and then we already get sort of a pretty good idea. And I will open the window because it's going to be 30 degrees or something. So let's have a look at the devices. Well, here it is. It is a little bit of a misfit in my Kidly stack. And uh, so I'm not sure. Maybe I, I, I move it to uh, to another place. Because it, it doesn't fit. But it is my only 7.5 meter. And it is those high voltage displays. And as you can see, that is pretty neat. It is big. It is orange. But recently I found also this one. This is uh, also a Kidley and this is the 193A. I'm so confused in the numbers, I really need to read them. It's only five and a half digits like the 199. Only this is then the, the desktop version. That does look better. But let's go to the detail. Just connected it uh, quickly to the LBO2A. I use that usually for uh, for simple multimeters like three and a half, four and a half, it works uh, nice. But you can see if you use it on a seven and a half, of course the large digits it will miss, but it doesn't go that far though. So if you look at the front, it has a lot of options. Your scales, your uh, one volt, 10 volt, 1000 volts, or auto mode. So you can also set it to auto, and then it will just go. So. It should switch back if we go to uh, one volt in. So that seems to work. Put the filter on for an extra digit. Wow, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty cool. Well, the front looks still good. All the lights still work. It switches over. All the functions just seem to do what I need to do. I put it on the calibrator later. Okay, we have a look at the back. It's pretty heavy to hold it like this. There are a lot of connections and I have really no clue. Well, of course, the power, the GPIB, calibration key or not, but you can just jump start that. Internal calibration every year, every 90 days, or every 24 hours. I need to read, seems very advanced. Yeah, and some extra options I haven't read. Looks uh, quite impressive, to be honest. Okay, I think there are a few from those internal hacks. Just see. Let's have a little look inside. Yeah, that seems to be it. The other side also. Wow, that looks pretty nice built. Everything is on uh, sockets. So if you need to do a replace, you can do. Well, it seems like they did a modification here, but it does say Datron, so it is from themselves. Well, the bottom looks just as impressive. I like that it is really built uh, by pieces. So I don't have the current board, so that probably goes here. This looks kind of AC. AC board. I'm not sure how old it is, but it is very, very clean. Maybe we can have a look on one of the ICs here, that we can find the weak numbers. A lot of them are 88. 8806, 
87. So we are around that age, I think. So I also put back the, the manual and the feet so it can stand up. And the manual is right there. Let's have a look from the other side. So here is it. And here's your operation manual. Look at that. All the buttons. I like that. They also do that in the Fluker. They have the whole book there. And then it's stuck. And you can put it in a nice angle as well. I was hoping I could put the Detron exactly on top of the calibrator, but I cannot because it has these handles in the side. They are still there, but I made this too, too tight, so it just doesn't fit. So I will just turn the camera later and point on both of them. But uh, let's start this up. Start this one up. Okay, let's just see. Uh, I think it has an AC module. I think it also can be resistance. I'm not sure about the, uh, about the current. But uh, let's just see. Let's just put uh, to 1 volt. Let's put my calibrator to 1 volt first. 1, nothing, volts, enter. Okay, output to the low here. Output here to the high here. Uh, operate. And then we have one fold. I think we can add an extra digit. Okay, the calibrator is for uh, 4.5, and we're trying here with 7.5. And uh, But you see, if I uh, compare it to my 34401, and I think with the filter I can even, even get an extra digit. That usually takes a little bit. And I'm not sure if can I get an extra digit there. Here we are. I would say that is uh, not bad. Can we do on one fold or will it crash completely? No, it will not. You can do a little bit of overrange. Okay, cool. And let me go to 100 milli volts. Pretty cool. 10 volts. Yeah, this is because of the filter. It will slowly go up because it's averaging. It's moving a little bit. This one is also moving. I'm actually surprised. Works uh, pretty, pretty well. I think I should be able to do a thousand. Uh, operate off. We need to be careful. This will switch automatically over. This one is. Yeah, this one should also be, but I'm not risking that. Thousand faults. Here we go. Yes, it does that. Let's go back to one fold. And let's see if the auto mode works. And then we go to 10 volts. It goes. Okay, it works. Not sure about AC, by the way. Does it do AC? Um, AC volts, AC volts, one 
fault. And uh, 50 hertz, and uh, we have AC one fault. Okay. Yeah, the AC is a little bit off. I don't think the filter works there because that only works. Oh, it does. I thought it was only for uh, DC. It's in auto mode. Let's go to 10 volts. To 100 volts. Right. Yeah, the AC is a little bit off, but uh, we know that. Uh, off. 1000 volts. I'm not scared. Um, Well, if you think that's pretty boring, we're gonna open it later. I'm just not sure if the ohms uh, module was in. Well, it seems to be. So uh, I'm gonna test a little bit further. So 100 ohms. Well, I think it does that. It is the same 100, go to 1000. One guy, look at that. Two, one, four. I cannot do this in parallel because then we are measuring. Not correct, of course. So I need to do one by one. Yeah. That is the same. Not sure. Can I go to 10 kilo ohms? This calibrator is so easy to, to handle. 10. Oh, that is. Uh, very nice 10k, and this is on two wire. Yeah. I don't know, can I do 100? Not sure if the calibrator can do that. Kilo. Oops. Yes, it can. Yeah, it's jumping here also a little bit. Um, let me see if I can do this with the uh, four wire. I think this is the four wire setting. Uh, I need to do external sense, by the way. Uh, does it go? Yeah. External. It doesn't want to do that. Oh, that is correct. It only wants to do that on the lower settings because it makes no sense doing this in the higher. So if I go to 10 ohms and I go to external sense, yeah, now it does the four wire and I think here I need to do this one up. Uh, this one. Then this one and this one. One ohms. I think the one ohm is off in the calibrator. Oh, not that much. <laughs> I was trying to measure current, but uh, if I push the button, nothing happens. So there is no current module in. So that was it, very short video. Just did some quick test, did some cleaning with a short look on the inside. I don't want to play with that too long because I might need to sell it later. Um, it just doesn't fit in my in my colors. It is amazing, it's seven and a half digits and it does still work uh, great. 
And uh, yeah, after the cleaning, I'm I, I'm amazed because it almost looks like new, and everything is there, even even this uh, manual in the bottom. Yeah, it's a cool looking meter. Thank you for watching, and uh, hope to see you next time.